The Small Business Show, episode 214 for Wednesday, March 13th, 2019. <laughs> Welcome to the Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show by, for, and about small business. Sponsors for this episode include abbyconnect.com slash SBS and textexpander.com slash podcast. We'll talk in a little more detail about those shortly here. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, at least usually, I'm Dave Hamilton. And out on the West Coast, I'm Shannon Jean. How are you, man? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm good. 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 I'm excited uh, to be rolling into the next episode. And, Same. Uh, yeah, I was I was saying before we started here that I've tapped, uh, you know, just about every person I've done. Well, maybe not every person, but but close friend people that I've done business with in the Apple space over the years. And today we're joined by one of those folks. Uh, and, you know, owning a, a, your own business or, you know, a single business is challenging in itself. Owning multiple businesses, it can be awesome, but it's a whole nother level uh, and, and running. Trust me, uh, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah it, it, it's a it's a juggle. And, you know, so so being successful at that over many years and then eventually being able to sell uh, both of those businesses. It's really an accomplishment, and uh, I'm I'm really impressed by it today with our guests. So we're joined a longtime friend of mine, business colleague Joseph Stewart, former owner of the Mac Outlet uh, in Colorado, and Felt Pool and Billiards. So thanks for joining us uh, today, Joseph. You bet. Great to be here. Yeah, we really appreciate it, man. Uh, yeah. We go back a long way. We do. Uh, Nine, back, 1990s. Yeah. Mid 90s. Yeah, well, I'm not that old. So I must have, <laughs> I must have been like. That's your dad. Yeah, yeah, I must have been. Yeah, sorry. Like in junior high school. Or <laughs> Just a so, couple of kids. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, I know more about the Mac outlet than I do uh, about felt. So so let's start there. Um Tell me what, what was, or, and tell our listeners, what was the impetus for getting into the pool and bar business? And uh, h- how long did you own Felt for? Uh, I kind of fell into it. It was not really my intention to open a, a pool hall um, at all. I was doing the Mac store and we had bought a building for the store and the pool hall was my tenants initially. So oh. um, they, that was like 2009, I guess, that I bought the building. They were initially very successful place. They had had a previous couple locations and had, you know, moved into this location and were doing well for a while, but then, uh, had been struggling, um, more recently. And so when I got in, they were, you know, trying various things and, uh, but nothing was really, you know, clicking super well. So my, my, dreams of having a rent paying tenant soon turned into the nightmare of, of <laughs> having a non rent paying tenant. Uh, so after about two years of kind of running around with, with that, um, I had to a victim and I always kind of wanted to do a turnaround, you know, project. I kind of liked the challenge, um, that that seemed to offer and, um, felt like, you know, they had been successful. I thought it was a, you know, a good concept, good location, and just kind of observing from the outside. I felt like there were some things that they were doing that, um, you know, could have been done a little better controlling costs and, and quality and some of that sort of stuff. So, you know, I was faced with, well, I can get a new tenant and kind of roll the dice, you know, uh, again and see how that goes or, you know, they're in the same building as my other business. I, I uh, will uh, be a masochist and <laughs> take on yet another uh, project. So uh, we shut the doors for about three or four months, did some renovation and kind of cleaned house staff wise and, and uh, new menu and all of that stuff. I had owned a nightclub years ago for about four years. So I was kind of familiar with the bar side. Of the okay. So this, this wasn't your first rodeo in terms of, in terms of that. Cause that's a, I mean, that's a very difficult business to get right. Any, anything like that is, you know, it, it, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I was a little intimidated because the, there's also full restaurant, full kitchen. Right. And I am, I am, you know, I can make toast and cereal and that's about it. <laughs> so that part was a little, you know, I got to get some good staff in here to kind of guide the kitchen for sure. But, um, yeah, the bar business, I, you know, I kind of knew, um, 
pretty well and played a little bit of pool. wasn't much of a pool player, but, uh, um, can hold my own. So I, uh, I thought, Oh, give it a shot. And, uh, it, it worked out well. It was, you know, very Great. kind of slow initially and, you know, kind of your traditional, uh, growth story, just kind of every year, a little better, a little better. And, and, uh, so I, you know, started that, I guess, 2011 and then sold it about a year ago. That's great. Awesome. And that, yeah. And that, it brings up a good point, you know, along this path of, uh, you know, owning businesses. When you say, you know, you, you eventually bought this building, um, that's such a great way to maximize your investment as a, as a business owner. Um, and did, did you buy the business personally and then have the, the companies, you know, lease it from you or how did that work? Um, as far as felt, you mean, did I, yeah, buy yeah. You, uh, yeah, I mean, so, I, more, more or less just, a, you know, I kicked them out basically they yeah. owed back rent and stuff. So it was like, well, you know, you can either owe me money or I'll just kind of keep your stuff. Uh, it. So it was, it was a kind of a neat, you know, as a landlord, you can, yeah. uh, you know, have that sort of power and leverage and, uh, you know, definitely had to spend some money cause they had sure. uh, toward the end, it was a mess. You know, they were selling sure. off their kitchen uh, equipment yeah. and, you know, so I had to, and in had terms of things to get right at, in terms of the building, did you own that as a separate business so that you were protected from risk and, and then could just rent the space from yourself with the other businesses or, or was it just all, all in one? Yeah. Three, three, you know, separate entities yeah. there. So we had done an Perfect. SBA loan to do the building uh, purchase, which is a great program. And um, right. yeah, being the, you know, owning the building, you know, it has its downsides too. Obviously when stuff breaks, it's your problem obviously, yeah. but the, you know, the real estate has really been a tremendous vehicle for me to kind of further, you know, my, my financial goals and, and uh, you just, whether it's owning houses or, or the building. So it, um, as I sold all the businesses, I've kept, you know, still the landlord now. So it's, it's, yeah. Um, right. Right. And in nice addition, registry. in addition to the house you live in and, and that business, do you, is real estate a part of your sort of your, your business profile? Do you have other th investment properties? Uh, I just have one. Um, so I, uh, part of the story that we haven't yet gotten to is that these are all in Denver. I have the house that I lived in, in Denver, but I actually moved um, to San Diego. So ah. not only, so I kept that rental house out there, I guess, to answer your question and um, do a little bit of Airbnb uh, stuff with my current nice. um, nice. space as well. So, yeah, it's that's a, great. Yeah. yeah. And, and the, the, that, that was the point I wanted to make is, you know, when you've got a successful small business and then, you know, you expanded it to, you know, the second one that that revenue generation and that asset really can help, uh, you know, underlie moving into something where you can buy that building and own it. And, and the SBA has a great program to help you do that. And it, it just really can further, you know, building wealth for yourself uh, over, over time. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, okay. So now I want to talk about the whole Colorado thing in, in San Diego. Uh, <laughs> I, I was always impressed, you know, it's like, God, this guy, like, you know, I just had this vision. You're on the beach every day. You got the cooler, you know, every time I would talk to you, you'd be like, well, I'm down in San Diego and you're running these right. companies out in Colorado. So uh, how did that, how did you do that? You know, this kind of uh, powerful remote management, you know, what, what, how, how did it work and, and what would you tell other people if trying to do it? Yeah. So, so to clarify, I started out in Denver, I was doing the Mac store for uh, several years. I moved to San Diego in about 2008, um, started felt shortly thereafter. I moved back and lived out there for about six months to kind of get a good foundation for felt sure. and then came back. So the, bulk of both of the businesses was run, um, remotely. Um, in part that was circumstances of life. And in part that was intentional. I, I really, uh, you know, I read the four hour work week. I don't know if you guys have, have oh, read yeah, that, yeah. Timothy Ferris's book, yeah. um, it really resonated with me. I was really kind of drawn to that kind of, you know, flexibility and lifestyle. And, um, so, been running, you know, not only two businesses, but two businesses, uh, remotely for the bulk of the last 10 years or so. Um, definitely a different gig than being hands-on and took me a while to kind of, uh, figure that out. I love really that it forces you, um, to work on the business and not just in the business. And I think that's a key, 
uh, mistake that a lot of business owners make. They get in the trenches and they're answering the phones and turning the screws and, and doing the work. But ultimately, you're kind of doing this, this you know, $10 an hour work uh, for a good portion of your day instead of the $1,000 an hour work that's really going to grow your business and, 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 uh, you know, take things to the next level. And I want to stop you there because that's such a good point. Uh, And I I love that, uh, forced, you know, to step away because you're remote and, you know, in another state, uh, and, and that, that, really, you know, requires you to have that hands off and to think about it. And that's, that's just a, that's powerful, man. I like that. I like that $10 an hour versus thousand dollars an hour. Pick which one you want to do and pick which one you want to pay somebody else to do. There you go. Right. Yep. Right. Well, sad, very easy, you know, on paper and so many people just don't do it very well. And so I, you know, I love that that kind of forces you, you know, at the same time, the downside obviously is you miss, you know, getting in the trenches, I enjoyed Mac computers and fixing stuff and, you know, the social aspects of owning a bar and stuff like that. So, sure. there, you know, certainly some downsides to it, but I think it was, uh, you know, helpful to, to, uh, grow the businesses and keep them, you know, on track. I think it made it much easier to sell the businesses Absolutely. as well. Yeah. Um, and you know, if you, if there's any weaknesses in your business, they're going to get exposed if you're not there, you know, on the day to day to kind of fix and patch the holes and plug the, the holes in the dike, you know, so to speak, your uh, with it's your systems, your hiring, your training processes, all of that stuff. So for me, you know, it was about laying a good foundation, uh, creating good systems, you know, to track inventory and, and ordering processes and, and all of that good procedures, making sure we were hiring good staff, um, and really getting out of the way of the, the staff. I made the mistake, I think early on of kind of, um, micromanaging a little too much, you know, hired a good manager, solid guy. I was very impressed with the guy, you know, but then I just, you know, hounded him a little too much. Like, this is what we need to do. Do this. Don't forget this, do this, do this, do this. And it took me a while to kind of find that sweet spot of, you know, you want to stay in, in, in the loop. You want to know what's going on. You want to, um, you know, make sure that, uh, you're keeping things, you know, they're, they're keeping things on track and all it's that so stuff. True. Yeah. We, we've space. talked about, we've talked about that quite a bit on the show here that, you know, yeah. you can go too far in the other direction too. And, and, you know, right. if you're, if you're someone like most of us who could easily be a micromanager, it's easy to say, ah, I won't be that. And then suddenly, you know, you're, you're clear on the other side of that sweet spot and you're not controlling the things that really should be controlled and, and, and molded and, and that sort of thing. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Smart man. Yep. I yeah. kind of did both, both extremes and kind Same. of, you know, at some yeah. point I was two hands off. Yeah. I had a lot of stuff going on, you know, personal life and stuff and, yeah. and two hands off and that wasn't good, obviously. And, and yeah, being two yep. hands on. So it was, and it was definitely a, a balance. Yeah. Um, you did find you find, it. yeah. yeah and, yep. and did you find that, you know, getting a key person, made all the difference or was it more kind of spread out with the, the you know, the, the staff and the team that was there um, that, that made it uh, possible, you know, to, to live remotely. Yeah. I think the key really is your manager. Obviously everything kind of revolves around them and, and they're only going to execute as well as they're, you know, empowered to and able to, you know, skill wise. So you got to find somebody that you really, you know, resonate with that understands your values as a, as an owner for the business, your priorities, your goals, uh, and, you know, has the, the vision and the ability to kind of see that through. Um, and you know, I certainly had a, a mix of that. I, I, again, took some time to kind of find. Oh, sure. Well, part of know, that work well together. part yeah. of that, I find, I mean, you, you tapped onto a really good thing there that, you know, you need to find a manager that can see your vision, but you also have to be able to articulate and communicate your vision in a, in a way that that manager can truly, you, you know, like has a chance to see it. So that's, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 It's very yeah. important to kind of yeah, yeah. reiterate. Yeah, uh, we we had one principle of like you know having making sure customers had exceptional experiences, you know. So that was kind of my my go to phrase, and and you know really trying to have the the manager get that, have the staff embody that, and um, you know articulating those things was was uh, 
an important part of it. Um, yeah, that's your, I, I don't know what your next, uh, you know, what you're doing next here, but you know, that's your book, man, is you know, <laughs> sharing that experience of managing, you know, businesses in other States on a, on a small business level. That, that's a, a rare uh, skill set that I think uh, you would be, uh, you know, people would love to learn about it. Yeah. yeah. It's been an interesting, definitely an interesting experience. Um, that's cool. You know, another, another important element was, was, you know, trust, but verify I kind of learned the hard way. You know, you, you have people out there and there's a lot of room for abuse, obviously, if you're not watching them, you know, uh, like a hawk. So I, you know, I had definitely some bad experiences with even close friends sometimes, you know, as, as uh, a manager and, and you find out they're, you know, scamming or, uh, and, yeah. and so really making sure you've got, you know, the, systems in place to keep track of the stuff that you don't want to have to keep track of, but you, you need to, you know, you just never know with people. So yeah. that was, that was an important uh, sure, for sure. element. Yeah. Hey guys, I, I'm going to take a break here and, uh, and talk about our first two sponsors of this episode. Is that all right with you, Shannon? Yeah, it sounds great. All right. Our first sponsor today is text expander at textexpander.com slash podcast where you can go to get version 6.5 of the utility that Shannon and I both say we cannot live without. Text Expander 6.5 for macOS and Text Expander 2.0 for Windows are out now. And they've added a new visual editor for your snippets. So we've always talked about how Text Expander lets you create these large blocks of text or take these large blocks of text, perfect them, and then invoke them at a keystroke or a click of a mouse. And that's awesome. What's really cool is that you can have it auto insert things like the date or tomorrow's date or all sorts of stuff. Previously though, you had to use like, you know, percent Y for the year and things like that. And you had to remember that. Well, now you can do all that visually dragging it in and it makes it way easier because you can see what your options are and you can see what they're going to be. If you come back to a snippet in six months, you're like, what is percent? Why doesn't matter. Now you can just see year and it puts it in like a little bubble. It's awesome. Really, really makes life easier on top of how it already made life easier. You've got to check it out. Go to textexpander.com slash podcast and that's where you're going to go to download Text Expander, get signed up, and get 20% off your first year because you're a small business show listener. TextExpander.com slash podcast are thanks to Text Expander for sponsoring this episode. We've talked on the show here about how important it is to prioritize the customer service relationship. When you run a small business, your customer touch points need to be optimal from start to finish, to ensure that every potential lead becomes a satisfied customer. That's why we're really happy to have partnered with our sponsor, Abby Connect, who can do this for you. Abby Connect's team of incredible, friendly customer care professionals provides a level of service that is virtually unheard of these days. They offer you over 100 hours of phone coverage per week at a fraction of what it would cost to hire another full-time employee. They answer your phone for you professionally the way you need them to, and they handle your customers like they're their own. And that's the magic of Abby Connect. And we're super impressed about it. They put that personal touch right back into customer care. What do we say all the time? Every business is the customer service business. Well, talk to your customers. And if you can't, you can have Abby Connect do it and be your front lines. And the results speak for themselves. Just go read the reviews and you'll see what a difference Abby Connect has made for so many businesses over the past 14 years. And we have a deal for you. If you go to abbyconnect.com slash SBS, you can get first a no obligation free trial. Second, after your initial trial, you get 95 bucks off your first bill. But the only way to do that is to go to abbyconnect.com slash SBS. Let me spell it for you. It's A-B-B-Y connect.com slash SBS. Our thanks to Abby Connect for sponsoring this episode. All right, Shannon, back to you. Awesome. Right on, man. So, uh, Joseph, they, they seem like completely different businesses, you know, pool and bar, other than being in the same, you know, uh, 
you know, building location. So pool and bar, Apple reseller, any, any similarities or, you know, did you share any resources between the two businesses? You know, at first glance, obviously they're pretty different businesses. You get, you know, service industry and, um, and a retail mm -hmm. business, essentially, you know, the Mac store, I guess, since we, we can get into that exactly, but you know, it's similar to what you were you know, have been doing in your past, buying and selling Mac computers, fixing Mac computers, just really on a retail basis that we weren't doing the mail order kind of yeah. stuff that you were doing. So, um, pretty straightforward retail business. Um, you know, obviously being in the same building, we tried to share, you know, I had same, you know, camera server and then just, you know, where we could, you know, internet access and, huh. and stuff like that. Obviously I, um, uh, I'm a big file maker developer, database oh, yeah. developer That's guy. Great. So I'm kind of a nerd. So I, you know, used some of that stuff between the two. Um, I think, I think you, I think there are three people here with, uh, without FileMaker. I don't know that any of us would be in business. So there you go. Yeah, that, that is true. Yeah. I'm staring at a FileMaker database right now. Same. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. just, there's no way to, to manage everything, uh, without them. So yeah. Fantastic products for sure. Um, yeah. free plug there. Uh, yeah, exactly. yeah. so yeah, I mean, at the, you know, different businesses for sure. You know, the service industry staff, you know, their wages are paid almost more by your customers than you. So, you know, there I really work to, to foster this idea that, that, you know, creating those exceptional experiences for the customer is going to directly reward, you know, the, the staff member, um, the retail store, we didn't have commission. So it was more just about training them, you know, to embrace that, uh, principle, but it was, uh, you know, both staffs kind of a little lower end staff, I guess you could say, you know, people aren't usually like, Oh, I'm going to be a career waitress or yeah, I want to sure. work at a retail counter, you know? So the, the, the fundamentals of the business, I think were very similar in kind of an odd way. You know, you wanted to keep track of your inventory, whether it's your, your computers or, or your, your liquor, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you want a staff that's focused on service, giving your customers great experiences, making them feel important. You want a good, you know, product, making sure the, the computers you're selling are well tested in good shape or, or the, you know, the burrito or the pizza you're selling tastes great, you know? So, um, you know, I kind of, from a fundamentals point of view, they were, um, similar, I guess, in, in more ways than you would awesome. kind of uh, you know, think at first yeah, glance. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. So let's talk about the Mac outlet a little bit. That's how we got involved uh, or a previous, you know, Mac company that we, yeah. we had, but uh, uh, you know, over 15 years in, in the Apple business, you know, and probably like tech restore and, you know, my uh, company before that, you know, things change all the time, new products, entirely new platforms, things you, you know, you build a whole part of your business on just kind of eventually disappear. I mean, did you, focus on, uh, you know, keeping change as part of the culture there at Mac outlet, or was it just kind of forced upon you and you just adapted over time? I think, you know, you, you recognize that there is, you know, change obviously in the, in the high tech industry, you're going to have, you know, new products and, and new, you know, stuff coming out all the time. Um, at our store, we were selling stuff maybe that was, you know, up to 10 years old. One of our kind of angles was, you know, you don't need the latest and greatest thing necessarily, you know, sure. we would, you know, what's your budget? What are your needs? Hey, maybe only need a, an eight year old computer. That's, you know, 300 bucks. Um, and, and that's going to work fine for you. So there was, um, you know, not this kind of solely, you know, living on the, on the bleeding edge. If anything, we were kind of looking back and would almost have to train new staff. Yeah. That's a great some of the older stuff. Yeah. It, it really, yeah. Cause the Apple stores do a great job of, you know, giving you the, the, the new stuff and, and selling you on the idea that you need the new stuff. So we were kind of the, the opposite of that. Um, I think for us, you know, and then the nice thing about the Mac store obviously is the people that are drawn to that typically are already fans of the product. They're already using it, uh, personally, typically, and they're, you know, so it's easy enough to get them to kind of naturally stay up to speed with, you know, the latest and greatest stuff that's coming out for me. I think the bigger challenges, um, along the way of, you know, doing this in one form or another for almost what, 25 years now was, was just the, the, broader markets, things like the, you know, the rise of eBay was a huge, um, you know, change, uh, back in the, back in the nineties when we were doing this. Um, and 
you know, still today can be, you know, a useful thing can be an awful thing and and trying to find how to leverage it in a positive way, whether it was buying stuff uh, from there, you know, we started using it as a supply option uh, in a lot of uh, ways and kind of changed our model a little bit from stocking all of these parts and inventory and stuff that we're devaluing, you know, every day and every, you know, time Apple came out with a new product, bam, everything's, you know, 10, 20, 30% cheaper than it was yesterday. Um, so kind of that just in time inventory, um, idea and, uh, eBay was, you know, a useful tool for that. And as well, you know, selling stuff. I mean, it's crazy. The, the junk you can get <laughs> that's been sitting on your shelf forever. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. And, yeah. You throw it on eBay or something like that, you know? So, um, I think cool. just kind of, yeah. Adapting to that uh, was kind of the bigger. Nice. Yeah. So, okay. So let's talk about, uh, selling the businesses. Uh, wh- what made you decide that it was the right time? I mean, were you planning, was this part of your master plan as you were laying on the beach there in San Diego or was <laughs> it, uh, you know, did it, did it, things just kind of happen naturally, uh, for you? Yeah, it was like, it definitely was in the back of my head that it was something I, I wanted to do and, you know, it was kind of increasingly so. I think that was born a little bit of just wanting a change of pace, a little bit of kind of being burned out with the limitations of, you know, you can only do so much remotely. And so I felt like I had grown the businesses, um, you know, to a certain point, but that for them to kind of go to the next level would require somebody who is a little bit more, um, hands-on and, you know, between being spread thin between the two, uh, a little bit, it was, it was definitely, um, you know, I felt like time to time to do it. And, you know, obviously when you're selling a business, you want, I think ideally to be, uh, it on a profitable uptick, you know, rather yeah. than in a, in a failure kind of situation. So, you know, we, we, you know, you have a little bit of ups and downs and stuff. So it really kind of worked to get things, uh, up, you know, revenue wise, profitability wise and stuff. So the timing was good. Um, some of it was born of, of like the Mac store. My manager said, Hey, I'm, I'm thinking about moving on. And I thought to myself, you know, do I want to do this yet again, hiring this new guy, training the new guy, you know, getting them up to speed. And, and, uh, you know, I just felt like, yeah, this is uh, maybe a good time to, yeah, to look at selling it. So that, that's, a, so, in, that's an interesting thing though, y- you know, for someone like, I guess, I mean, certainly like me, but like many of us small business owners, if you're there, you know, it's hard to, to detach and, and let it go. E- you know, even if on paper, it makes sense to sell it. You, yeah. you, you know, you were physically detached from it, but that also, as you said, you know, kind of becomes a part of your sales pitch. Like, Hey, look how well this is doing. And I'm way over there. If you're right here, you're going to be able to grow this thing. And then, you know, it's not a lie. It's true. You show how this thing can be on its own. And now, you know, you've got a nice opportunity for somebody oh. there. That's, that's a pretty yeah, good for thing. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, made it very easy. Yeah, for yeah, sale and wise. So, so uh, did you? Uh, it kind of leads to my next question about uh, seeking outside buyers, or you know, uh, the process. Did you use a business broker, or did you wind up uh, selling the business to that manager, convincing him to stay? H- how did it all come together? Yeah, um, I you know I talked to some brokers initially. Um, I am kind of a hopeless do-it-yourselfer, and so I was like, well, you know, I can probably do what these guys are doing. There's no magic, you know, to this. It's just getting the word out, and doing the negotiation and stuff. I enjoy that aspect and the creative elements that you know come into play um, with that. So I thought, oh, I'll give it you know a shot on my own and, and see how it goes. And if I don't have any you know luck, that's always a a backup option. So, um, with the Mac store, I did, you know, discuss with my manager, um, you know, doing it, uh, buying it. He was interested, but he was a little reluctant as far as the future, um, viability of certain elements. Uh, You know, this is one we talk about change or whatever. And I, I kind of agree timing wise, you know, the repair business, as you well know, is evolving and, and Brutal. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, are these things still going to be fixable to the degree yeah. that they are, you know, in five years or something. And so that for me was a little bit of impetus to maybe get out for him. That was a big concern. So we kind of went around a bit and, uh, but he kind of, you know, was just feeling like he, he wasn't willing to pay remotely what I wanted to you know, get for yep. it. 
so that kind of fell out. So I just, I used a website called bizbysell.com, uh-huh. um, which just, it's a flat fee. It's, you know, three, four, 500 bucks, something like that. And you put up your info and, you know, they've got all their people, um, that subscribe to the, to the new listings. And, um, yeah, both were, were, yes pretty straightforward. That's awesome. Uh, deals. Yeah. Yeah. I like that through yourself. I'm, I'm, you know, similar. I like to see if you can figure it out and uh, yeah, save the 10% too. Yeah. It never, it never hurts. Definitely. So, so do, yeah. does it, I mean, is it weird now that you don't, do you feel weird not having these businesses? I know after uh, <laughs> I've sold a couple as well and it's, I'm always like looking around going, okay, now what, you know, and especially right. recently where, you know, we, they moved the business to another state and all this kind of stuff. And, and you're like, what now? I mean, what, what's next for you? Yeah, it's definitely, you know, a little surreal. You're like, is my phone on? Is it, is it, <laughs> no, it's not, I'm not getting texts. I'm not getting calls. Uh, so yeah, definitely been an adjustment. Um, but a nice one for me, probably less jarring because I wasn't doing the, you know, wake up and get into the office at yeah, 8am and work till six every day. So it's, it's a little bit less, um, uh, you know, of a shake up there for me right now, you know, I, I sold felt about a year ago. I sold the Mac store uh, right at the end of last year. So it's still fairly uh, new. I feel like the opportunities in life to kind of just stop and, and smell the roses a little bit and, and, and learn and explore and reflect are kind of few and far between, you know, we we're always doing the next thing and diving in and, and tackling the, 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 the projects and, and, um, you know, which is great, but I, I feel like that's a rare opportunity. And so I, I want to kind of protect it. And so I've just been, you know, taking care of myself, going to the gym, doing some meditation, just reading, learning, you know, and just kind of being open to, to the next thing. So I've yeah. got, you know, a few ideas, popping around in my head. I love what you guys are doing as far as helping, you know, small businesses and stuff. So I've thought about, you know, maybe getting into some consulting and work like that. Um, and then I've got a few, you know, billion dollar ideas where you're like, you know, I'm getting kind of older. Like this is maybe my last shot. Should I go for it and kind of do the, you know, the, the moonshot idea. So, that's not, that's um, great. But yeah, I think it'll unfold. Uh, yeah, I, I commend you uh, for you know taking a breath and uh, uh, stopping. It's as a challenge uh, to you know yeah. you've been involved in stuff. Um, l- let me. W- was there anything that really surprised you during the sale, or or did things just kind of go go smoothly and uh, you know you just kind of knocked it out of the park, and, you know, with no problems? Yeah, I mean, I've. I've uh, owned and sold and tried to sell both successfully and unsuccessfully enough businesses to kind of know there's a few traps. Um, the biggest one of which is kind of, it ain't done until it's done. Uh, you know, so I, I had with the, the felt sale initially a buyer and we were negotiating and everything looks good and had all the paperwork drawn up and the lawyer reviewed it and I was flying out to sign the deal. And then boom, stops responding to my texts and oh, yeah. like, what's going on? Come to find out she'd bought a whole nother, uh, bar. Ah. Um, so, uh, you know, that, but I had known going in, you know, that lesson and the challenge really is, 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 you know, when you've got one foot out the door, keeping the business going effectively is important. It requires some discipline because you're, you're like, Oh, I'm going to be done. And, and so you're thinking, you know, maybe I won't worry about this or won't worry about that. But then when things kind of, if things fall apart, then you're scrambling to, to course correct and get back on track and, and stuff. So I really, um, yeah, that, that seems, that seems like a really uh, important lesson to keep, you know, keeping your eye on the ball during the entire process because you just don't know how things are going to work out. Yeah. It's very easy to to think up. It's done. I'm just going to kind of let it, let it coast. It's it's great, you know, but man, if it falls apart, then you're, Oh, Dave and I have both been there (laughs) (laughs) together. (laughs) In fact, (laughs) one one time. Yeah. That's a, that's a lesson that, that, that you learn and don't forget. So, yeah. Yeah. For yep. sure. For sure. For All right, sure. cool. So let, let me ask you a question. We, you know, we always ask everybody this question that comes on the show. Uh, you know, I'm a big fan of mistakes as I, I've made so many of them in you know my career and learned so much from them. You know, it, if there was one mistake that really taught you the most during your, you know, careers, uh, owning these small businesses, what, what do you think that would be? Oh, one mistake. That's, I know you probably haven't made very many. 
dozens. How much time do we have for this show? Um, <laughs> you guys going to run out of recording tape or whatever. Yeah, that's um, right. <laughs> yeah. You want to alphabetically? Um, I Biggest mistake. I would say one huge thing that I think it took me far, kind of embarrassingly long to figure out, um, you know, as a, as a, small business owner, you're always kind of got your eye on the bottom line, right? You're worried about profits and expenses and all of that stuff. And one of your biggest expenses is payroll for you know a lot of businesses. And so I would always kind of play this game of, you know, uh, you, you'd talk to, you'd find the guy you want to hire and then it was come time to salary negotiate. And, you know, where do you want to be, you know, salary wise? And they would give you a figure, you know, whatever it is, 25 an hour, let's say. And I would say, well, how about we start you at, you know, 23 an hour and we'll see how it goes and, and kind of, you know, uh, you know, work you up to that or something, you know, trying to kind of get people a little bit on the cheap. Um, and, you know, on the one hand, you're looking at it and like, boy, if I, you know, if I pay everybody in this, in this building an extra dollar an hour for individually, that's not that much, but it's going to add up and, you know, it's going to, it's just going to kill my, my profitability. Um, and so that was kind of my justification for it, you know, controlling costs and, and, um, but it really, you know, what I really realized was it's so easy for an employee to, you know, cost you an extra $10 an hour or conversely make you an extra $10 an hour by just their attitude and, and how well they're, they're doing. And so it's, it's an investment in that, employee. It's, it's scary at first to say, you know, yeah, fine, I'll pay you this or I'll pay you more than, than that. Um, you know, with my last manager and I said, hey, what do you want to make? He said, he gave me a figure it was 50% more than my previous manager had been making. And I didn't bat an eye. I said, you got it. Oh. And it was the best decision that I made because he was then, he didn't have that, you know, at the back of his head, like, oh, you know, I'm not paid enough. What if, you know, maybe if I was over at this other uh, business, I'd be making more money or I used to make more money here or whatever. So really trying to take that off the table and really take care of people and really be generous uh, with your staff um, is, is tough when you're, when you're feeling, you know, pressured, um, uh, financially, but it, I, I firmly believe, you know, yes, some employees will take advantage of that maybe, and you're kind of overpaying them in that situation. But I think on the whole 80% or, you know, or so of your employees, if you've done a good job hiring them and you do a good job, you know, training them and, 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 and defining your vision and, and, uh, you know, it's, it's going to come back to you. Yeah. That's um, great. Uh, multiple times. Totally so that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And the, the way they feel definitely impacts their uh, their attitude and their performance and all that stuff. So I, I, yeah, it's, it's really good. Yeah, that, that's awesome. I mean, it's it's a great story, man. Uh, I, you know, like I said, I commend you on uh, your success and going through the whole process. Uh, any other tips? You know, I mean, we we've got a, you know thousands of small business owners out there listening. Anything else that you would you know that you could drop uh, you know t- piece of advice to them that would help them you know have the same kind of success that you've had? Um, I think, you know, we kind of discussed it a little bit earlier. I think, uh, you know, I did an exercise many, many years ago where I literally spent two or three days literally like tracking in like 15 minute increments, how I was spending my day, you know, on the phone doing this, whatever, whatever. And then I went back and I put, you know, is this $10 an hour work? Is this $20 an hour work? Is this thousand dollar an hour work? And, you know, very illuminating project, obviously a little bit of a hassle to, to, to spend a couple of days doing that and, and logging everything, but you really get a, a crystal clear snapshot of like what you're doing, um, throughout the day and, and realizing how, uh, much time you're spending on, on ridiculous work and, and whether, you know, and then realizing maybe you should be hiring somebody to, to do that. And again, it's, well, maybe I can't afford that or whatever, but realizing that, you know, it's the thousand dollar an hour work where your business is going to grow, it's going to become more profitable. And if you're freed up to, to do that, I think it's, uh, it's tremendously, uh, you know, helpful. So doing that exercise, that's a good way to hack your brain, man. You know, you hack you, you hack your brain, and and then and then it's easy, right? Because now it doesn't take discipline. You're just you, you know it's the right thing to do. So yeah, 
Right. Yeah. yeah I great. think the other thing I, I, you know, I really encourage people to do is, is whether you do it or not, take on the project of looking at what it would take to be an absentee owner, pretend almost like you're, you're going to do this. I think it's very helpful as your business, um, grows, you know, you're creating kind of an owner's manual in a sense for your business. It makes you evaluate your systems, you know, it's, it, whether it's tracking your inventory, your orders, um, you know, really defining and thinking through your processes and your values as a company and all of that stuff. Uh, it's very helpful. I think, you know, like the, when I was doing the bar restaurant, you know, you could go through the kitchen and, you know, I just had the, the, cook, you know, just do inventory and kind of eyeball stuff. And, you know, just, you know, this is what we need. This is what we need, you know, but realizing, you know, we, there's a better way here. We need to create a system that, so if this cook, you know, quits tomorrow, you know, I can just plug anybody in here and, and it's much more accurate and that sort of thing. So, you know, really looking at your systems in that way. And like, there's things that you kind of just take care of yourself, but it, it, you know, to, to make your business a little more sophisticated sure. uh, and, and a little better able to grow and maybe eventually sell. I think that's, yeah. you know, a, a worthwhile project. That's smart. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like that, you know, there's that, there's that phrase, you should run your business like you're going to try to sell it tomorrow. Uh, Cause it forces you to, you know, get things together and, and, and look at all that stuff. So yeah, yeah. I, think, I think that's great advice. And again, you know, congratulations. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Uh, if, uh, you know, anybody wants to connect with you, uh, can they find you up on LinkedIn or anything like that? Or what? Uh, I am not, I'm kind of pathetically not much <laughs> online. Um, <laughs> we'll just have them uh, go through uh, us. So you can, you know, if you have a question for, you know, Joseph feedback at business show.co, um, or you can come talk in the small business support. Yeah. I'll hop on the, I'll up on the forum yeah, yeah. Known there so that, yeah. that would be great and that's at uh, businessshow.co slash facebook and thanks for listening everybody we appreciate it thanks so much yeah and thanks so much for coming on joe this is yeah. awesome oh, my pleasure really yeah, really pleasure. great yeah cool folks we will see you next week keep living that charmed life 